two, one. Let's How are you doing, everyone? Uh, this episode, we call it three or we call it episode two? It's episode three. Episode, episode three of the JT podcast, obviously, Young Glenn, and this is Tony, well, we just call him And then we have another guest here. Uh, ben McCormick here, how are you doing? Oh good, how are you lads? Oh good. Not too bad, happy Sunday here in uh, T-Mac Fitness's kingdom as usual. So <laughs> we like to enjoy ourselves here, you know, in the domain. And if, uh, if anyone doesn't know, Ben McCormick is a professional football player for St. Patrick's Athletic. So Ben, we'll start off with you introducing yourself. How are you lads? So I'm uh, Ben McCormick, obviously. play for St. Pat's in Ireland and Used to be in this domain when I was young, but I'm not I tell you, we had some great games and no cup doubles out there, didn't we? <laughs> we, have <ourselves> <laughs> <laughs> we have ourselves a local boy here. Yeah, one cup doubles, when one cup doubles was popular, it was great. Now everyone yeah. just double dropping at the age of 12. Yeah. So, yeah. so in Harbour, was that, was that used on like, is our, was this just a national game, doubles? Yeah. We used to run on doubles, 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 doubles yeah. Yeah. About 20 of us on that. Singles, everything. Remember Mikey Fitz, he yeah. gave us all. And Glenn's good mate to Mikey, but Mikey fits you to go mad. If you score, you pick your partner, right? <laughs> so you'd always have the fucking, the six fumbles left to come to the exam. But Mikey could actually play, yeah, he just couldn't yeah. run, right? right? So he'd break his bollocks in the first round, and then he'd score the last goal to guarantee a spot. He'd pick a partner, he gets stuck with Lee McHugh, right? <laughs> and he knows Lee McHugh, like Jason Park's nephew. <laughs> but, uh, fucking, then Mikey would be just knackered, wouldn't oh. he? And he'd tap out, he'd tap out after getting through. Yeah. And he'd be done, and he'd gone after the spill. But I well, well, you know Ben. I know Ben, he must be right, don't he? Yeah, don't he's yours, isn't he? Yeah, we only lived down the road from each other. And uh, that's why I really wanted to get Ben on because it was good to see Ben involved as a footballer. Knack out of the football. Knack out of the football. How old are you now? Uh, just gone 18. Who's gone 18? Yeah, and, 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 and they're playing for Pats now? Yeah. Jeez, that's yeah. a, it's like a walking yeah. barbell, isn't it? That's, <laughs> <a, laughs> that's uh, a, yeah, big slam in the gym, like, yeah. That's, uh, that's impressive, like. So, yeah. so, obviously, we're going to go into kind of related to questions. So, like, how old were you when you started playing football? Obviously, everyone kind of gone through this. Uh, it would have been just a young play, like, probably three or four. But it came around here because it was my local club, like, so. I only lived down uh, down the road, so my dad got us into her. Then, uh, so, in case anyone yeah. doesn't know what's here, it's uh, St. Paul's. St. Oh, Paul's, yeah, Paul's, Paul's, yeah. Paul's in Arcane. Anyone in the area started off at St. Paul's. Yeah. And then, as soon as you hit 12, gone. <laughs> gone. Like, so, just, yeah. everyone in Hamo would have played around her. So, yeah. we all played. And then, obviously, like as I started getting on a bit, like I was obviously wanted to, like, Challenge myself a bit more then. Yeah. Mm. So, like, my family would have always been down in Belva. Yeah. So, we went, my dad wanted to take me down there. So, when I went down there, like, played there for about seven or eight years. Like, I went mm. when I was about nine or something. Mm. So, I just loved it down there. And then moved on to Pats then when the underage league world started. Oh. And ever since then, I just progressed through Pats and then into the fourth then. So, you played so you played for Pauls until you were about nine. Yeah. Then you went to Belva then until you were 17. It, that's yeah, 18. 16, yeah. It sounds young that when you moved off from pods. Yeah. Like you were playing football at pods, you were five, yeah, you? Yeah, it's probably playing. Like, like remember, remember all Joe the lads been all, they would have all been all that. Like, what would have been a bed up to cover yeah, places you would have been three years younger? Yeah, it would have been <laughs> playing like three or four years old there with the lads and all. But yeah, yeah. Remember, was, remember one game we were in Pomanic and we were under 12s. I was actually a year older, but yeah, yeah. you had to ask him, and you were on the bench. Yeah, he used to he was play. Three years younger, he was on the bench, yeah, and we're playing again, we were under 12s, he was only eight or nine. And then my, my dad used to manage my brother's team. Yeah. My brother played for Paul's like, and uh, if they needed numbers, I'd be like, ah, go on, Charles on the bench there. Oh, hold his own, uh, that's... Uh, you used to have the long hair and everything, didn't you? Yeah, like, it was like little messy, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> messy. So, like, so how did that, like, so obviously you were playing three years behind that, though. So, like, in terms, like, when you were when you were a kid, like, were you... Were you small? Were you, would you have been too yeah, small to been, play, or would yeah. you? Or like, did you kind of were you tall for your age, kind of thing? No, nah, I wasn't tall for my age. Would have just been. No. Or, we, have, we got some free kicks in World Cup doubles. We're going yeah, to take me. Leading you, getting milked down. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> would have been smaller than everyone else, yeah. obviously, because they were all older. Like I always used to play with all that, but because uh, I never, I'll never them, forget but, that because I used to be mates with older brother Luke, and we'd be out playing, and then you were always wanting to come out yeah. and play. Even when we were in the garden lane or across the road, and one summer you came out, yeah, and he was like, he was small, he was only getting the hang of it. And then the year later, because remember, people didn't want to be with you because you were yeah, so young, and we got stung together yeah, a few times. Yeah. And then one summer he just came out, and the fella just started weeping out all the he's done them on concrete, <laughs> everything. It was like he was kept in a lab, all this, <laughs> injecting fucking Zidane's blood in, like, everything. And well, he just I came out, and then every the year, world. yeah, he just stepped it up. And, yeah. So, nah, I used to love playing, there was nothing bad than playing on the road. Mm, Did you yeah. nothing bad on it? That's probably 
how I am as a footballer, like a kind yeah. street footballer, and that's helped me yeah. to where I am. Like that's definitely benefited me. Like even playing the World Cup doubles and playing mm -hmm. on the street, like you can see it now on the players that play now because they don't play on the street anymore. I don't no. think like we yeah, used yeah. to like we go out. You'd improvise kind of. Yeah, thing. you just do whatever. Like yeah. we, I'd say we go out and look at the field, like and there be no one on the field, no young players. No. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. just too, all the kids are too busy on their phones yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's gone like now, but. but Back in the day, we used to. Yeah, twenty was yeah, the start. It was, yeah. was Everyone in the uniform on a Friday, yeah. especially everyone be in the field. Straight over, books yeah. in, my homework's done. Yeah, <laughs> Mikey, <Mike, laughs> Mikey, you know they on his top. Me and Q, how we was getting on the jet across. <laughs> the yeah. Was on you down the lift a lot. Me, a year old, and the lads yeah. fucking <laughs> twice the size of them, and everything <laughs> fucking. Oh, it was unbelievable. But we had yeah, some crack in yeah, yeah, But cast. that's where you learn the football. And nowadays, yeah. you don't see people like that, as I you know. say. No. So it's kind of worrying, I think, in the next five years. You don't know where they're going to come from or what? Everyone better to their phones, aren't they? That's, that's it, exactly. That's, that's, that's a it. bigger problem as well. So see, obviously, when you were playing football, like when you were a kid, did you play any other sports or was it just football? I would have played... Oh, it was always all football. Like, I'd play for the skill. God. Ah, oh, yeah. I just think, to I get think out of class. I think everyone does a stint. Yeah. I, think, I remember when I was in skill, I think I was, I was on the running team in school. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I don't think I ever was a Running, yeah. I, was on the, I was on the basketball team. Yeah. You, you do just get out of class. Yeah, just to get out of class. Like, I never had a knack of fire. Gar and it was always football. Yeah, I actually have a funny story now over in over <laughs> Brendan's across the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was like a, a hurling yoke going on every Monday or something, right? <laughs> so, so I can sit on the Monday, find me, find me scar to get into it, yeah? <laughs> right, so, first day out, not enough helmets. The lads are like, ah, oh, can't do anything, like we need to. Half the lads have helmets on, half don't, right? So we all dribble the slitters there, and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, we know how to play hurling, here's me like that. Flick it up, boom! Holy strike, yeah, man's eyeball, yeah. What? There was a slip. Oh, some foreign fella, Mohammed or something. Oh, oh God. No. How did you feel about that? Straight back, I was like that. Drop the hook, God. <laughs> back down the bell, but KO. KO, something like four years old. He was in second class. He was in John Barry's year, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in John I remember that happened. Like, nobody coming home telling me, yeah, Mo got a smack of a hook. The boy was gone. I was Took like, yeah, yeah. 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 Ever since then, haven't played for him. <laughs> haven't played Gah or that football ever since. So that's that's what I thought. Yeah. Now, how did sorry to come across here, but how do you how did you find now getting back onto the football path? When you were with Pauls, obviously you were young, you didn't have a sense yeah. of position. But as you develop a bell point, what position would you be playing now at Pats? I play midfield. In yeah. Back in midfield or Yeah, but you were always box. happy with that position. Well, down at Pauls I used to just play probably up front, I think. Anywhere attacking. Because they used to just love scoring goals, like I just I used to not pass it, like I used to, yeah, to, to, to be honest, yeah, I used to just run and got away used it. to score goals, but then, like I think that I always, I always had a knack for scoring goals, yeah. so now I'd probably be like a goal scoring midfielder, yeah, yeah. but I'd be probably like more creative, like wouldn't be as, wouldn't be lightning quicker at him, but probably more smarter mm. than faster, yeah, yeah. Or something like that. Like I'd be better on the ball, tight areas and all, than straight running, like, I'd rather that, but I'd probably, for a year at Belva, I played at the back. Played centre back. That's right, yeah. yeah. I remember you telling me that, yeah. I played for a year at centre back, and I was like, What was the manager on crack? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seven aside or something, I was on. Oh, yeah. You used to play at the back, then I'd go into midfield, like, but um, I didn't really enjoy it. Like, and I said it to him, and then he was like, Oh, it's just covering. I think a fellow might have had an injury or something. Yeah. And obviously, back then, there wasn't, there was probably only eight or nine players in the team, like, so yeah, I was yeah. just covering that centre back. But then when I went into midfield, I progressed. I was, I used to love it because it was kind of, I probably went to Velvo as a striker and then played centre back, and I was like, yeah. What's going it's on? Going here? Around, yeah. So did John O'Shea? Yeah. A little bit of both. And then yeah. when I played in midfield, it helped. But I always, like I, I have an attacking mindset, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I'd be more of an attacking player. When you got pushed into that midfield, was, that's when you started seeing clubs from above. Yeah. Over. That's when yeah. I was, because I, I was on, the, I was in the middle of the game, involved in everything. Like I used yeah. to love it. Then I was like, when I play up front now, like if I used to play with me mates or for the school or out, and I used to say, ah, this is boring. Like don't get any of the ball. Like I yeah. love being in with the action and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So just kind of obviously what Andrew was saying is talking about the, the skill. So obviously yeah. clubs came over to obviously have a look. So could you tell us kind of about experience. It's kind of fair you haven't you really? Yeah, I would have been like my age group when I was at Belva. Like I would have been probably one of the players that would have went to most of the clubs in England, like mm. and experienced it. 
Now, as a young player, when I was just say 13, and 14, I would have said, like, I want to go to England. Like, if I don't go to England, you call it failure. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah, that's the be all and end all. Like, yeah, but, but it's not really a big Yeah, big. but then when the League of Ireland came in, that changed, like, that changed my mindset. But as a young player, I was like, if I don't go, this, like, it's over nearly. Like, like, but, play football yeah, that's all like, I wanted to do. Like, yeah. if I didn't go now, I'd never go. Yeah. It's like, but I think that's kind of changing in Ireland for the better. Like, because I don't this, think. Sorry, but this is exactly what you want to get Ben on. Because not many people understand the system that's yeah. going on in like, the way the DFL are running it and how the schoolboy system is, how the electricity system is. Yeah. And this way we want to get Ben's taking it because you're right in the middle of it. And it's only actually, you're seeing everything up front. Yeah. So now we want to get it across to people who people who are coming through, who start maybe just going into the early yeah. leagues, electricity, one of the 16s, that trust the process. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah, and then again as well, what you were saying is people who aren't recognised. As I say, it's easy enough to get yeah. a professional footballer on from England and say, oh, we'll, like, we'll, we'll get this person on top of the experience. But Ben here obviously is a great example of, he's he's only he's only gone 18 and he's, he's, he's playing fourth team football in the League of Ireland and he seems to be very happy. And he doesn't see himself as a failure. And this, this is exactly what we want to get Ben on. Exactly, exactly what we were saying a couple of weeks ago. People who aren't recognised and who deserve the recognition for what they for what. They deserve to get. So, I'm well, uh, sure, but yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, yeah. I want to get back to them skill clubs. Tell us a bit more about that. What age were you when you first got skilled and how did it feel? Uh, probably would have been 12 or 13. Like, you'd, you'd see scouts at games yeah. and then you'd probably like want to turn around a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're yeah. on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you step step over. Over. <laughs> <laughs> you step all over again. Yeah, you'd be trying to scout ball and show off a bit, but then, like, Obviously, um, they go through the club if they want you over. So yeah. I remember the first club I actually went over to was Celtic. Just the first club I went to. Oh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, mm. yeah, I was. I went you away. Went, Chelsea won them as well. Oh, you had a trial in Chelsea yeah. over here, yeah. But and, Celtic was the proper. Celtic was the pro me proper first trial where I was away from Holland, living in digs like, and then we went to a tournament. I remember actually, the team was playing. Do you know, uh, Carmel got in Melee. Yeah, 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 he was playing in the team. He was, he was unbelievable. Was he? Yeah. Like, oh, he's he probably he, he's a little bit older than you now, isn't he? Probably. Yeah, he's, I think he's old three as well. From two thousand. Is he? Yeah. I think he's two thousand. Old three and old seven and three. Yeah. Old seven. But what was it like? Really? Obviously, it the Jordan setup is yeah, completely it was different. different. But I think that was a good club to go, obviously, because they loved the Irish. Yeah. So I fitted in real well. I loved yeah. it. And then that just kind of like peed out. Your mum was like, "We want you back over." And then just kind of peed out. But then I would have went to other clubs. I remember I went to like Leicester, Crystal Palace, a few other clubs, Fulham. And I really enjoyed it over there. Like, and I remember like I had the chance to go to England. Yeah. But I wanted to stay over here. When I was a bit older, I had the chance then when I was sixteen probably to go over. And, yeah, I could have went over like they. The club invited me over, like you won't say who, but yeah, they wanted me over, and I was going to like it was the first Pats offered me a professional contract over here at the age of 16, yeah, or yeah. more or less, I could have went to England, yeah. So it was kind of one out of the other, like, with, was that a pro deal in England as well? It would have been like, uh, academy type thing. yeah, academy type yeah. stuff, yeah, but like, it's it's like people would say it's better over there. But personally, I wouldn't say it's better because I'd rather play in a first team over here than underage. Yeah, than underage over there, like working your way up away from home. It's like, kind of like an apprenticeship, as we yeah. were saying before the whole before we started yeah. recording. It is like apprenticeship, it's like a system abroad. Yeah, but you're just a number over there. Like yeah. you're mm -hmm. not, like they're not working on you. Would you get me? Mm -hmm. Like you're just, an, you're one. Yeah. If you're gone, they don't, they don't do. Yeah, they get someone like, else. Yeah, they get someone else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's another thing as well. Like you see a lot of people who do go over to England at like at that age, and they end up coming home and they don't yeah. do that, they don't do their leaving cert or they don't go to school or they don't have anything else to do yeah, with yeah. and they're in a kind of a state of like, what will I do now? Because football was kind of everything to them. Yeah. You know I mean? So it's a good, so it's a very mature decision on your behalf. To come yeah, I think that is people. one thing that when you come home, like you're shattered, like you have to. You have to be released from an English club. That was your dream to do. Like, what yeah. do you do now? Yeah. But then, when you've gone to England, you probably look down on the League of Ireland. Thinking, yeah, they probably do. Yeah, thinking I'm too good for this. Like, and yeah. then just kind of 
loads of them players just coming to go fade away. Because you notice that people who you'd know your age were great, they made the bronze, didn't walk out to come back, then they're playing for local yeah. there because yeah. they, as you said, think they're too good. But yeah. uh, and then uh, they uh, from the home yeah. and they just took it in. Like, yeah. And what, what was but, the transition? Oh, sorry, you going to say? I would say my dad would have been like, yeah. the biggest help because he wanted me to stay over here mm. because he's. Like he's seen people that's gone to England and it hasn't worked out. We've seen what they've been like. Like obviously, you know, Ray. Yeah, he was a sports, he, wasn't he was it? in the sports, he got homesick. Mm. Uh, like he didn't work out. My dad seen it firsthand. And then when the underage league world started, he was real interested in it because he knew what the Colorado players over here were like. Mm. And then he wanted me to get into the first team. So then when I go over, I'm more mature. Exactly. And then, played at the force team. Yeah, and understand. he wanted me to get me leaving cert as well. Yeah, that's another so, big thing. Yeah, well, you know, obviously, I actually, like, I left school this year to start the sixth year, but the way the school had it is I actually got me leaving cert because I was basically doing it from home. Like, okay. So they, I was doing home school then for this year so I could train with the force team. Okay, very so good. So I was in full time with the force team, then doing home school. So then now, now I've got a leaving cert behind me. Whereas if I went as a young player, I wouldn't have a leaving cert. You didn't you don't fall back yeah, on. So now I've uh, something to fall back on. Yeah. I'm playing in a force team over here. And then hopefully now in like two or three years that I'll move away, I'm more jump. mature, and I'll make the jump over and train to a force team over here. And then like hopefully that's the plan. Because anyway. I think that's crazy. He's only 18 yeah. and he's playing force team football at the same time. But um, main thing, what is the transition like? Obviously, yeah. you know, when you were Bellevue, you were probably training three times a week max. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we literally do. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday and Thursday. Then you do a game the weekend. But as soon as you go over to England, it's nearly it's a whole yeah. system, isn't it? Yeah. Your, your life revolves around training. I will fit you in the school here. Yeah. Get you in. What was the system like over in England? Yeah, it was. It was basically forced him over here with Pat's Good. boy at fourteen. That's, so so that's a lot to take. Yeah, so how often would you train? Like, you train, then you go to the gym. Mm. You eat proper. Like you'd probably go in to just say the training ground at eight o'clock and you wouldn't leave till four o'clock. Right. That was it was like a skill day for them every yeah. single day. They won't have an interest in skill either. Yeah. So then you'd be doing that on a Monday, doing that on a Tuesday, doing that on a Wednesday, then you train towards they probably wouldn't have a gym, then you play on the Friday. Like it's yeah. it's full time and it's as the young player, like it's Take your wear on it, like you well, You can see why players born. Yeah, so you can see why players born. With the, with the game. Like you can kind of go one way where they born out the unflis, or they just turn out to be machines. Yeah, some of them are in England. Yeah, that's why you overheard that trying to get a more full time so you can compete with them. Yeah, you make the jump abroad. Yeah, you're, used, you're accustomed to it. Yeah, you're used to it. So I'd say if I was to go over now, I'd be used to it because I train full time. Mm. So I know what it's like. But I think back then when I used to go away, I used to think. Oh, this is tough. Like mm. these are doing this every day. Like I'm not used to this. I used to yeah. find it tough sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But obviously I could play. But just on my body, I used to say I'm in bits or like. But yeah. I think over here the way they have it now is is basically <coughs> like England. It's only recently they have it. Like yeah, it's only yeah. recently. Like I'd probably be the first one to go through properly. That said, no to England. Yeah. I wanted to stay over here. Yeah. So now, like I want to be the one that says, the only the one that they say, look what he done. Yeah. He stayed, said no to England, stayed, and now he's gone to England and he's playing yeah. forever in the Premier League or in the Championship. Yeah. Doing well, like he's gone like, I'm more mature. And that's exactly what I was saying. Like, like, not everyone has to have the same path when they're like, yeah. 14, 14, when they're at 12, and then eventually mm -hmm. come back, whatever. It said, like, what you're doing now, obviously, you're, you're playing Irish football. And then, obviously, in time, if you go to England, great. Yeah. So you're actually setting a good example, which we haven't seen from a lot of people. I actually don't think. Key find it, didn't he? Yeah, a few of them did it. It's very, well, it's very, very few, rare. Matt Doherty. But if you went through the Ireland team, the ones that play, played in League of Ireland, mm. the likes of Matt Doherty, Seamus Conlon and all them. They played force in early age. So yeah, they, most of them would have the played force team early age, yeah. so they won't be, they've played with men. Mm. Most of them stay over. Like There's loads of people that went over. They would have just, say, been the so-called best over here at their age, and then mm. they just came home and... They don't even play anymore. Who had the best setup though? Was there was any club you walked yeah. in there, brother, and was like, wow. They were a very good setup. Like, even when, think. when you went to Celtic, you sent me a picture of all the gear. Yeah. Yeah. Like ben knows I'm a big Celtic man. You sent me all the gear you got. Yeah. And you didn't even get Last the key back. You know, so he texts like, get a pair of shorts. Yeah. 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 A few of them, though, have let me keep gear. I remember Leicester's training ground. It was the season they won the league, I think. 2016. Oh. Outrageous! Should have seen this, yeah. And they've done it up since. 
But when I went over, it was class. Fulham as well. Indoor down and that. Oh, it was unbelievable. Trying to think. Where, where did, it's, uh, did you go to Lennox Town, did you? Uh, I was there Town. for a day. Yeah. And then went away. I think we went to England then for a tournament. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah. Lennox Town's half hour drive. Yeah, yeah. The digs I was in was like 20 minutes from me. You brought me to it. Yeah. Then they brought me on a tour of Celtic Park. Which was a class. Nice. Oh, it's one of the best stadiums I've ah, So we, we took a trip to South Park yeah. ourselves and brought the lads over. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so it wouldn't have been the guy that was at Anthos, so yeah. he's horny for Celtic. <laughs> and then he brought us over for a game and I changed your mindset. And now I'm uh, also horny for Celtic. So, yeah, they have a great show in the gap, let me know. <laughs> so. I was saying Swansea's training ground. I went to Swansea mm, twice. Well, yeah. there was, twice you're over there. Uh, theirs was class. I'd say theirs was class. Uh, they don't train, they train away from the force team, the under edge. Okay. But you should see this. This is like the whole building and all they have. It's very modern, like it's all oh, it serious. It's nothing that you'd see over here. Like, but the money's pumped in yeah, over here. It's pumped in, yeah, it's pumped in, but it's a joke over there. Like, it's a madness compared to over here. What players now would stand out for you, Brad? Who you, you, you witnessed in the uh, and stuff like that? Do you what players? Do you see any players when you were over there when your trials are playing now yeah. in the Orlean Ranks? Um, was there anyone you see that come through on their team? Uh, Dembele of Celtic would have been, yeah, yeah, yeah. been a magnet. Yeah. I think though, I remember someone said to me years ago, a fella from Elbo said, look, he'd be very good with players now and how they'll turn out and he said he won't be as good in when he's 18, 19. Yeah, and look at him now, he's struggling he's, to get struggling. in. He's struggling. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when he was 14, when I went over, I mean, it was like Messi. That's yeah. not what it was like. It was the best. God, like, yeah, he was probably the best. He was hyped up there. Probably the best in the world, yeah. He would be tipped to be the best in the world, young play. Like, he was running rings around everyone. And now he's kind of just beat it away. Like, yeah. he was class. Do you know Harvey Elliott? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I played with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. him. He was a good player. He played with him? Yeah. He was a bit older than is he? No, he's out really he's well. That's he, great. He, he went, he signed from, like, he went from Fulham to Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. He's not now on a blackboard yeah, now, is he? Is, yeah, he's good doing player, well. Yeah. There's a few players, I'm trying to think. Them two would have obviously been so the standouts. And Harvey Elliott, he's the same age as you, isn't he? That's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As you said, these players are built up. You look at Harvey Elliott on the screen, you think he's a lot older. Yeah, you're old, wouldn't you? you, you, think, look, you even looking at you now, you think you're a lot older. Like, <laughs> when you say that, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you would, you would. Cause yeah. you, but there wasn't something you just took a spare from. Yeah, there was. Like, they probably used to be small, didn't they? Yeah. But, yeah, it's the joys of puberty, isn't it? As far as the voice started getting deeper. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, exactly. Like, but even you see that as well with a lot of. Uh, a lot of people who just grow up in football who have like who are like full time professional footballers, they have that kind of aura about them. Yeah. That they're more mature and kind of yeah. stuff like that as well. And that's I know it's that with kind of a lot of footballers yeah. that like but you actually a lot older than what they are. Yeah, I would say I've changed definitely since yeah. going into the force team. Because I'm obviously around men all the time. Like yeah. I'd be the youngest on the team, so like I'd just be around like some of the lads have kids and all, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's it's like, yeah, he's, well, he just finished the league. It's mad like yeah. for me, but so that's made me more mature, definitely. So that will help me ten times when I go away. It will, yeah, like, absolutely, definitely. But I love it over her. Yeah, I really do yeah. love it over her. And so, so go on. It's always just hard to see. You obviously with, with club level, obviously you've done, you've you've trained well, obviously at club level and stuff like that. So I went international. So you you've obviously been playing for the country as well. Yeah. So what what years have you played? And obviously, uh, so it starts at fifteen. Yeah. So I've played fifteen, sixteen. Seven days, then COVID hit. Yeah. And then now, well, now I'm in the nineteens. Yeah. So I'd say fifteens. Not gonna know. Like I thought I was good enough to play, but the manager wasn't really having me. Mm. He was like I wasn't starting. But then when we went sixteens, the manager loved me. Like he was playing me in that position, gave me kind of a free roll. Okay. And then I was playing like we played ten games or something, and I think I scored. Two or three goals and got like eight assists or something Jesus. from midfield. Like, I was because I was in that role, he gave me the license to just enjoy myself. Yeah, exactly. So, so when yeah. then in the 15s, I was probably like up tight, like didn't want to make a mistake. But when he gave me, yeah, yeah, when he gave me that role, like I was just 
I could enjoy it. Yeah, the shackles just, are off. Yeah. Like, I just was enjoying me football. And when I'm enjoying me football, like that's when you get the best out of me. Dangerous man. Yeah. <laughs> dangerous <laughs> man when he enjoys football. <laughs> <the box. laughs> <laughs> when, when you're playing, um, when you're playing, obviously football. Like what kind of like have you obviously you've been all over the place playing football. So yeah. what kind of countries have you been and what tournaments have you played? Yeah, that's one that. Uh, Playing for Ireland, you get to travel the world. That's what I love about football. Like you, you have to go mad places. So we've been to Spain loads of times, but I'd say the maddest country we've been in is Israel. Oh, yeah, we Israel. went to Israel on my seven months. Oh, yeah, the lads, so. <laughs> <Three Palestine. laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't even mind when we went over. The, the, all the bombings were happening and all. Oh, oh, yeah, it was a madness. I'd say about we couldn't really leave the hotel all as I'd say, like half an hour, there was bombs. That's getting kidnapped. Oh, I, I, I went over it now, and like, yeah. not even allowed to hold hands around. Yeah. And I was walking around, as if we'd be holding hands anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 walking down the road, like, in a shop, and all, you don't know what to do. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Because there's mad rules over there. Yeah. 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 Mad rules over there, you don't know. And then we go to. What's that? The Wailing Wall? Do you know the Wailing Wall? No, it's the Wailing Wall. No, it's just it's like the big fucking wall over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. It's just like an Israeli type of song. I don't know if it's Israeli geography, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and about the women getting sectioned off and all. That's crazy. It was a madness. Yeah. yeah. Joke, isn't it? So, why? The body was all down to the Wailing Wall. Why? Just the fuck is the tourist attraction or whatever? Like, What's on the other side of the wall? I don't know. You put notes in the wall and all. Money? No notes. Like, no, 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 we get the right. Let's say you go out to board or something. Like, yeah. You know, I'm mad into you. You know, we're gonna get married. Me, three oh eight four. Is it like, is it like <laughs> the the lock and answer that? You know? Kinda, yeah. But that's obviously for couples or whatever. Like, yeah. I think this any like, hash just say like, like, like a dream or something. Like, I'm what the world's gonna bring it maybe to. Maybe not a dream or something. Something you want that. Wow, load up in two weeks or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put in, I get out of this alive. That's <laughs> all the man's going on. So why did you go, what had you over in uh, Israel? The tournament. So, yeah, we, so played we, had, yeah tournament. we played the three games over there. So uh, we played Israel the first day. We won 2-1. That was a very good result there. A very good. Brilliant. And then um, two days later, we played, I can't actually remember the team, some African team. Under twenty one, so we were just bunch of like seven years. Luggies. Yeah, God. <laughs> we were four years under, or something like three. Well, they were the twenties, nearly. Yeah, yeah. So these are very way old. So you can man off Lazio. They have a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen, he looks forty two. He joins the These are so old. All of them six foot two and all, but they can kicks now off rope. That shit. And like, oh, it was actually mad. Like they were in mad boots and all. Yeah. Like it was actually it was actually real weird. But they had a few decent, but nowhere near yeah. what the other teams are in the tournament. Like. And then we won that four 0 Then we fucking Grand Kavanagh's son obviously got uh, what do you call it? What? Yeah, he got simbed in. That was a real in the fucking so, yoke. So yeah. what? So we so, so simbed in football. Yeah, I don't know. They were testing out. You wait for wanted to test it, so they just tested it on our fucking development tournament. Wait for a fuck, then they just yeah. got rid of away goals as well. So, yeah. Like, so instead of a yellow and a red card. Well, there was, like was a, a yellow and red, but it was kind of like a black card. So what's in between? So Sylvain yeah. so is like bald during the ball step. Yeah, basically, in mm. the corner there. Mm. So like the women. No, but in, in that part of the country, yeah. obviously the women are treated differently, yeah. so that's what's a joke, right? Get over it, we all of our mouths. Anyway, having a jungle, yeah? So he got Sylvain, but... We were all arrested because we all played the force game. So yeah. we were arrested this game it's like two days later. And they, uh, like, he's sitting in and he's kind of sitting like a bit down from us. That's like literally a bottle of chair. Like, you give him a stick and chair. Yeah. We're giving him a stick. I'm like, what are you doing that for? Like, we knew it would be you. We knew it would be you yeah. that tested this real life. Like, <laughs> we had him riled up to it. So the fella's going on freaked. Really? Like, his head was already in the bin because he didn't start the worst game, obviously. Yeah, he's so now he's playing this game and he's free. <laughs> Comes back on two, like, two minutes later, karate kick someone. Sent off. Straight red. <laughs> Straight red. Gone. No, 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 no bin. bin. Yeah, no, it was beyond. It actually was like no, 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 to put your foot up for and he went for he got sent off and here was me the lad came on at the time one about 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> just said, oh, we told him the lad still on the bench and I was like oh fuck said, that was he us on the last leg of my contention oh it's a yeah. international boys now you obviously you had an off season with the Ravens because of Covid yeah because of Covid uh, 
So I played on that 15s, 16s, 17s, now I'm on that 19s. So the under 15s, I don't think I said this already, but the under 15s, I probably, uh, well, I wasn't starting. Yeah. The manager wasn't really, I'm not sure if he was taking me or not. Okay. But uh, yeah, he wasn't starting me, so I was kind of, obviously, needed. I worked hard then. Yeah. Then the 16s manager loved me. He played me in that free role, kind of behind the striker. Could kind of mix around, drop the go get freedom. on the ball. Yeah, freedom, enjoy me football. Yeah, but pro club, the any position. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I was like, <clears throat> I was loving it. Yeah. So then when I'm enjoying me football, like as I said, when I'm enjoying me football, I'll just start doing my shit. Like, as, Bad if, man. I'm, as if I'm a young player, as if we're playing hammer. Yeah, yeah. Playing the baller. Yeah. <laughs> Not your name, Akil. Get the snot to your face. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll literally just start, I'll do whatever. Like, I'll just mix things up. That's in the street football. Yeah, I'll just play as a street football and yeah. come on the road. And uh, we played 10 games last season. Uh, they're obviously not competitive, yeah. Yeah. Until on that seven ends. Yeah. And know he scored three goals and got like eight, eight assists or something, something like that. Eight or ten assists or something. Brilliant. We've got very good stats, like, and then I got player of the year, the Emmy player of the year. Then that's so, incredible. But that player of the year is really big on our team. Yeah, the whole show. Tell yeah, you what we did. We've been annoying. You can get the one in the old talks. Fucking all. Yeah, we're doing like a fresh fest for eight of them. Everyone on the blade yeah. and the boards checking you. Keith Andrews just standing there. So. <laughs> 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 Fuck off, Keith. But look, think about it. If Richie yeah. Sadler gets a gig with RTE because he played with the 15s international, <laughs> you can have RTE with the Euro, don't you? You're up there, Richie yeah. Sadler now. Exactly. Kenny yeah. Cunningham, yeah, you yeah. catch him next. Five caps on the 16s, Ben McCormick. There you go, yeah. Kenny yeah. Cunningham. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, so, you get, so, see when I played international, actually, do you get physical caps? Uh, yeah, you get physical so, caps. So, you get one for a season, though. So, you know. Oh, oh, okay. What was it like, though, getting your divorce? The divorce cap was class. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It was unbelievable. Like, obviously, you know, yeah, getting a cap, but something some that was just as good as it was uh, a ram on the match against Montenegro. Mm. So that was obviously, I didn't, like, I knew I was getting a cap, just yeah, like, I didn't know you I was didn't getting know, man yeah, the match. Yeah. So when I got man the match and got the big pennant and all, oh, it was sick. Brilliant. That's one thing that, that I have, obviously, I got my shed done up, like, yeah. you know that, and then <clears throat> out the back, we kind of put loads of shit from football and all. And look, I have Mitch. a big wall from all the pennants that I've played against. Oh, it's serious. Like all the teams that I've played against uh, so far, like on the wall. It's only going to keep growing. So much on the wall, it's only going to keep growing. You want to hold a hotel? Build <laughs> <laughs> a second shed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's serious, like the teams that I've played against. And you are saying, where have I gone as well? Another place I've gone is Hungary. Mm. We played against Hungary. Oh no, Hungary. Fucking, no, it wasn't. It was Bulgaria. Serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bunch of little baby bear tops from the nose. Serious, it was. Oh, this when someone says, "Where's the best place you've played?" I'd say Bulgaria. Why is that? Did you ever see? Did you ever see a famous, like not famous photo? Did you ever see a photo where someone says the view? Yeah. This view was oh my god, big huge mountain. Like it was on the edge of a cliff. This pitch was like something mountain. Yeah, yeah. When you play in the hills of Brazil, was it? It was serious. Serious. Yeah. Oh, it was unbelievable. The best. Uh, stadium I've ever played in it was class. That's what the international football does. Like, this is crazy. Just we need to say again, you're only 18 and you're playing in all yeah. these mad spots. Yeah, it's sick. travel the world basically. Like, yeah, travel the world. I love traveling the world. Like that's one thing that I like enjoy traveling. Yeah. Like so, when I go to all them places, it's just serious. Like and then you actually doing the thing that you love yeah. while you're there. Yeah. So it makes it even better. And then you obviously I've played with the same lads since I'm 15. So I'm since I'm like 14. I'm playing with them, traveling the world with them. See, so it's it's so just good. with the every day. Yeah, and some people won't understand like the bond that you have with your teammates is different to like a bond that you have with your, my mates. Like yeah. it's a different kind of bond, like different banter and stuff. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it's class when you're over. Like it's just that it's unbelievable. Like would you class me with teammates? You know, doing the triathlon. Well, we basically see each other every day for the last fucking. Since the, since the middle of March, I've been chatting long. That's for a different day. It's, it's, it's really <laughs> That's for a different day. Come yeah. here for our episode, okay? Yeah. We'll yeah. worry about that at the end. Do you like it? Well, so that's the international rally we've covered. Yeah. So now, currently, what's our current affairs? You're only 18 years of age. What's the story? Where are we at with Pats? So, obviously, training full time. Now I'm done skill. So, that's one thing that like I was dying to get ticked yeah. off the list, kind of. So, that's done now. So, now I'm just fully focused on football over her like i'm loving it over her and really enjoying me football so i'm going in every day going to the gym every day 
that was one thing that wasn't down when I was younger that they would have been down in England. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like over here, I'm down over here what would have been down in England. As you said, Ireland are catching up on that. Yeah, Ireland are catching up, especially the four stands. So I'm training every morning, then going to the gym every morning, mm. and I'm playing with better players over here, playing with men, playing competitively. That's one thing that I really love down because as a young player, I used to be so competitive. <laughs> Used to start crying if I got knocked out in the game. Never been in the league. Yeah. I was so competitive, still am. So now it's like going from underage where like only the finals and the big games matter. Yeah. When you like literally four games in the whole season now, totally matter. Like, yeah. Shy, not shy, but like not competitive, basically. Yeah. yeah. going into. Week in, week out. Week in, week out, three points on the table. There's literally nothing better than me. Like, yeah. there's no, I've never, At your age, yeah, this, this is what you want. It's so good. Like, it's so good. And the team I'm in now, like, we're top of the table. So we're challenging for the league. And I'm yeah. only young. Like, all the boys I think in the team, like, it's so good where you are. Like, you're only 18 and you're challenging for the league. Like, like, in your, yeah. your country of football. Yeah, like, you can win something at 18. Like, none of the lads have won that at 18. So, like, oh, it's unbelievable. Playing in the big games, but how competitive it is, is so much better than playing underage over in England. Yeah. Like, over under in England, like, it's shy football. Like, they that's don't, what people think. There's people. nothing in it. People yeah. think it's class. Oh, yeah. you play for someone that's a Premier League team. Yeah. We are playing for the under 17s or the under 18s, like, and it's. I think it's just the number, as you said, yeah, just the number to Playing friendlies, like, what's that? That's that's the word, like, it's way better playing over here in a force team. Learning with men. Being proper, recognised, yeah, doing the same stuff as you would be over there, but it's way better over here. Yeah. Don't, kind of, obviously, I take a person for the play in the league, but when some people kind of diss it, I look down on it. Like, I don't know why they do that, because it's, it's as good over here as it probably is in like League One in England, kind of like yeah. The top of the table teams over here will put it up to them teams. That's a big thing that yeah. we've chatted off camera before. But a lot of people in obviously there's not much money in the league. Yeah. And you have people working two jobs. Yeah, like obviously some of the players, like the balls captains, a painter, just says That's crazy. Bro. Like, he's a highly recognised yeah, club. He played balls and he cycled from his job in his worker down to the stadium, our stadium, got changed and then played a match. Like don't yeah, people don't yeah, understand. Yeah. The walk that's put in yeah, these the players. Put in, mm -hmm. Yeah, boy players and then they're probably first of all they're not even watching it. Yeah, and they're commenting on it. They're commenting yeah. on it. And then second of all, they're probably saying, no, he's show you anyways. You've yeah. never even seen him. And the, this is you like not I was, watch it. this is like I was saying as well because I, I'm not, I don't want to offend anyone here, but my whole stigma of football is same, it's the same kind of it seems like it's the same what everyone else is like. So my opinion of Irish football, I never even watch a boy yeah. oh, ah, the standard is shite. But I've never actually sat there and watched a the full game. Yeah, Irish football. That's understandable though. Uh, but like that's, it is that seems to be everyone's stigma. Yeah, it's it. yeah, and I think it's starting to change because more and more people are going to the games again. But I think that is understandable because when I was 12, 13, I just wanted to go to England. I would yeah. have said, no, hardly come to, hardly staying in Ireland. Yeah, what's like, an Ireland? Who does that? Like, no money here. It's only players like that. that aren't good enough to go away stay in Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking, if I don't go away, I'm not good enough. Yeah. When that's not the case, because I'd rather, I, I'm going to become a better player by staying over here. It's more experience. Yeah. Day, but yeah. I think people need to recognise that it is better over here. Like I'd say most of the people that watch this probably don't watch League of Ireland. Yeah. And the one thing I would say is do watch it because if you do watch it, your opinion will change. 100% mm. will change. And all that for a fact because mine changed. And ever since I started playing in League of Ireland, my mates' opinions have changed on it because they watch it. Yeah. Because I play. Because they watch new play. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. And then, and then they're they're watch it. So they're, they're watching the games. Cool. They're interested. They, they love the league now. They, like, even if, just say, they bring up the league, they talk about the league, like, yeah. other players, they don't talk about Pats, they talk about Rovers or Bowers. Like, they, I'd be walking down the road, they'd be saying, like, Sligo are doing well. But that's what you like, want, because yeah, they have all these fuckers commenting on yeah. them who are quick to pay money to school you watch the English yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of cat, and he's all about dodgy box at yeah, home. It's not like they just have their own football yeah. channel. Yeah. Watch your own country's yeah. football, and you'll appreciate what these yeah. players are doing. Because they do, I would say, to take one thing from this podcast, I'd say, from this episode, I'd say, watch a match, watch a Pats match or watch a Rovers match and your opinion will change, 100% it will change. Mm -hmm. and, and then you need to think Definitely. about, where, what are these players doing outside of it? Yeah. Some of them are obviously doing trades, yeah. some of them are looking after their families. Yeah. And like this. There's not much money in this country for the football. 
So do, before you give grief yeah. to this country about the standard of football in the Irish League, do appreciate what the players are doing. Exactly. Show up and actually represent the club and entertain that small minority yeah, yeah. of fans that are in these counties. Exactly, because like everyone's working an 8-5 to five or 9-6 to six or whatever. Like, imagine they're going to play a match then. All you have to do is sit at home and watch the match. At least cunts are giving out saying that they're not trying to pick up for your local team. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people are content working out their 9 to 5 and then go home and then she'll out for you watching yeah, Netflix. Exactly. These lads are going to play the highest level of, of Irish football that they can. Yeah, and especially on a Friday. Like, that's another thing. You play on Friday nights. Oh. So you can't say fucking United are on. Yeah. City are on. No, yeah. they play on Saturdays and Sundays. That's why the league is on Friday nights to get to more get people attention. to watch it. Yeah. 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 So if you're, everyone loves watching football. Most people would watch any football. You go around to the park and enjoy a football match. So you can't turn around and say there's no football on. Because mm. there is football on a Friday it's night. In so watch it yeah. and experience it because, as I said, your opinion will change. So you just need to... You just need to go that four step and do watch it. Yeah. yeah. But I would say if you want to watch, like definitely a good like someone that plays football, I'd say watch Pat's or Rovers, John McRovers, because we do play football. You would be entertained watching yeah. a match like that. Mm -hmm. And I oh, tell you now, the amount of drama in the games, serious amount of drama in the games, like really? nearly as good as a pre watching a Premier League match. Obviously, the Premier League's gone dark. Obviously, yeah. the standard in the Premier League is obviously different because they're just. Will be as they yeah. in the league, like for playing in your own league, like the stand up is good watching it for who you're up against and all that. So yeah. Yeah. it's like watching, like obviously, a game playing against better players. Yeah, so you would enjoy it. There's no reason you wouldn't enjoy it. Well, just it's not like some score score. Yeah, exactly. And some it, of the goals you'd be saying. This is yeah. coming from me who doesn't even watch League of Ireland, but from what I'm looking at, obviously, when I look at the table, the odd point. It's like a new a different team is competing exactly. in a different That's spot every year. Don't yeah. I mean, yeah. At the moment now, three of us are on 35 points and three of us are on the same goal difference. Jesus. And there's eight, eight, we're halfway, we're at exactly the halfway point. So fast forward 15 games and there's three games to go. I bet you now, for a fact, them three teams, or even a 14 bows as well, will probably be up there. Yeah. So there'll be four teams going for the league. Then there'll be teams going for the top four in Europe. Yeah. So like that just shows the drama that will be in the games and but how yeah. good the games will be. Because yeah. you're trying to win the league. Even a team that gets relegated, they have to play second place in the league. Yeah, isn't exactly. it? So always drama. The, the air trees are doing so much they can to attract that. Yeah, attention. exactly. So I don't know why you won't watch it because yeah. everything's. Because you're quick to watch the fucking League Two playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you don't even know who's playing. There's yeah. no excuse not to watch the league. No, there is no excuse, no it's excuse. everywhere, or T-shirt show the games. Yeah. And it's not like, as you were saying about the money, like the players don't even play for the money. No. I know, they, I play with them, they don't play for the money. They play because they love the game, and because they want to win. That's all they play for, because they have their own jobs. Like, they can stay doing their own jobs if they want to, but they don't. They make the effort, because they love the game and they yeah. want to play. And they most really, of them want to make the league better. Do you really think they want to walk 13 hours a week yeah. on Soya or whatever it is in the classroom and then go out to play football? Yeah, like, They're doing it for the whole yeah. purpose of getting this league notes yeah. and they enjoy what they do. It's nothing to do with money, it's just pure enjoyment. Exactly, it's nothing to do with money because there's not enough money for them. Exactly. To do. Yeah, like, yeah. If it was nothing to do with money, they wouldn't be walking on the yeah, side. Exactly. Like, yeah. But there's definitely no excuse for someone watching it at home not to watch. No excuse. This is exactly what, sorry, Guillermo Congress. This is why we get Ben on this program because uh, for episode three, to recognise Irish football in this country and to recognise a young man like yourself who's only 18 and he's going for the highest league in the country of football. Yeah. And the mate, you played 14 times this season already, yeah. haven't you? You have 18 games. Yeah. He's yeah. only 18, one of the youngest players to play for the, for the first team, aren't you? Yeah. So, like, oh. Just so, hope you win the league, like we're good enough to win the league, so imagine much. winning a league at, or winning a cup at 18, playing in Europe at 19. But as you said, um, I don't know whether you said it on or off, but you said the lads in the dressing room were unbelievable. Yeah, that's another thing, like you go over to the English, and I've been in England, and there's times, I'm trying to think where I went, I won't name the club, but I actually wanted to come home after a day. No Seriously? word of a lie. I was a Celtic mate, was No, I wasn't Celtic. That's fucked up. I wanted to come home after a day. No word of a lie. I just said Well, it's because they were arseholes? They or? were arseholes. Stuck up. Like, just didn't make you feel welcome. And that's the last thing you want. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, leaving your family and all the go like, over there. Thinking you're going to go take that position, like... Like, yeah, we well, yeah, are, anyway, he's poor. <laughs> <laughs> and our missus. <laughs> <laughs> but for the rest of the players, you're not even in their position, so 
Why are you being a cunt? Like, why are you being a cunt? Then he's all there to learn. Yeah, yeah, and it's, the, it's the English Ari, in fairness. No. That's the way they are, but... They look after themselves. All the English have always done. Dog-eat-dog dog yeah. dog kind of mentality. Yeah, that's yeah. what it, it is. Dog-eat-dog. Dog. I don't mind that. Yeah. But when you go out your way to make someone feel unwanted or... Welcome. Yeah. Unwelcome. Then you just don't give a yeah. fuck it. So then it's like, fuck that. Like, yeah. could you have been a team? Sign for them. Sorry, sorry for a cut of caution. Could, but could this have been a team where... Because you were an Irish lad and you were in an English club, mm. is that would that be one of the reasons? Do you feel it could be like there's loads. Obviously, there's loads of Irish lads that have come up, gone over and done well. Mm. But it's say there's loads of Irish lads that have gone over and been treated like shit because mm. they're Irish. Yeah, like I'd say that does happen. I I'm not saying it definitely does happen, but it could. Yeah, like but I know the way the English are because I've experienced the, the English. To me, most of the time, I'd say nine times out of ten. Eight times out of ten have been sound. Yeah, but it does show that there are people and the English young players that think they're way better than you, and think, oh, you what you doing? You're not good enough to come over and take my jersey. Mm. Like, and they're they're under under seventeen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What jersey you fighting for? Are they today? Exactly. Then what I was saying was over here, the dressing room at Pat's is unbelievable. Exactly. Like, the team spirit and just the team bond, the togetherness is unbelievable. The like guys saying that. I say to the lads, Bermo and Giff Forrester and stuff, like, I'd say to them, like, who, who was it come? They'd have a list of people. When they were your when age. When they were my age, yeah. that were like, because kind of old fashioned, probably, like, to build the young fellas up, build that character up, they do things, like, yeah. But you wouldn't, they wouldn't be close, like, the younger boys would probably stick to the, uh, the younger players in the team. But now, like, you know, I'm the closest with Bermo. Yeah, you, you see that, you see our comments are shot with yeah. you, and you're always yeah. ripping into my yeah. story. <laughs> like, he'd be my best mate in the team, like, I'm the youngest, he's the oldest, like, that's Back what it's with like. 10, 15 years, we wouldn't have the captain of the youngest yeah. lad in the dressing room talking. I was only saying, you'd be cleaning this the boost. other day, exactly. Yeah. I was only saying this the other day, like, you wouldn't be down, you wouldn't be on the bus slagging him. Like, that wouldn't yeah. happen. You'd be, like, petrified. you'd be sitting at the top of the bus shitting yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's changed now, and it's changed in the young players' performances. Definitely. The film, well, like, relaxed, yeah, because yeah. you're chilled out, you're in with the team, like you're fresh with them, you're enjoying it there. Like you feel at home. You know so, what like, you're enjoying. Stand. Yeah, you're enjoying your football then. Yeah. And then obviously if you're enjoying it, you're playing well, like you're not uptight about it, nervous around if you make a mistake, because yeah. any of the lads are gonna say on. But I'd say now how close Nick to that team is, I wouldn't say that there's no comes in the team. Mm, that's what you need. Like, there's yeah. none. So it's like that's the perfect environment for me to be in. They're only going to blossom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm, the gaffer's literally only retired two years, so he's the perfect manager for me. To be on that you're, so your manager now, who is he? Who is he? Stephen O'Donnell. Yeah, and, he, and he's played. And he's, he's played. He's won everything there is. He's played in the Europa League, like qualifiers. Like he's done it all. Like literally everything that's to be done in the league, he's done it all. Like played with Arsenal as a young for young flick. So like he's played with Cesc Fabregas and that. You're learning like, from them players yeah. like that. Yeah, so I'm learning from him every day. I get on great with him. So like I really like probably how do I say it? Like per like I'm perfect on that him because he give, he was a midfielder as well. Yeah. So he gives down his experience, mm -hmm. and then obviously Chris Forrester would be the one that I get off. Like how do I feed off him? The yeah, like, feed off yeah. him, yeah. Because we kind of be similar type of player. Like, resemble style of player. Yeah. Like that. So like obviously I learned off him, That's and I actually remember once <laughs> in training, uh, getting nailed me, and uh, <laughs> the, the gaffer stopped the session and I was like, "You're supposed to be teaching him." And he no, didn't bring no, did he? Yeah. No, yeah, he nailed me, boys. All right, because I've been kicked up and down anyway since the young play. So yeah. I don't mind it. Like, I always, mean, he didn't have a boy. We always get on with it. Yeah, I took a boy. <laughs> And then, like, just say, like, he got told off, and he was like, You're supposed to be learning off him. And then, just say, well, Remember what it was? There was like a match on this pitch, a match on this pitch. We were playing like five of us or whatever. Then we had switched over, so I was in the back, and everyone was saying, like, Oh, what did he do? And all. And I was in the back of the house, and I was like, What are you He went in, and he was like, Oh, they have to rinse me out there, saying, and, uh, Saying that I milked him and I came in and like, you got skin. <laughs> <laughs> I remember saying it, oh man. But the banter with the lads does be class. Like, because it's proper Irish banter. Like, yeah, you, know, yeah, like, yeah. you won't get it anywhere else. Like, it's Irish banter, then mixed in with football banter. Mm -hmm. And all this, like, obviously I'm the youngest. So, on the bus home, some of the trips and all, they'd be telling me stories. 
that they've been so they've been through it all like but they've been telling me mad stories that yeah, has yeah. happened like stuff that they've been through when they were younger and all stuff they've done mm. and i'd be sitting there on the back in the corner i'd be like uh Jesus, I'd say, I just doesn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does be a few mad else stories, but no. It's quite like an apprenticeship going on at the moment. Yeah, basically, like, it's. Basically, as I'm learning, learning the game, but I'm playing. You're playing 14 football, yeah. you're 18 years of age at the higher standard in Ireland. Yeah. And I'm, you said no to abroad to learn, and you're learning the every day, and yeah. your gaffer obviously recognises your ability with the new thing he has planned to you. Yeah, so, and it's definitely better. I'm glad I made the decision, mm. was the one thing yeah. I'd say. I'd say it's definitely gonna benefit me. Like if it doesn't yeah. benefit me, fair enough. But I, I'd never regret the decision that I made. You yeah. want to turn around and you want to say you want to be the force to go. But like you want to yeah. experience things of Ireland and then in the future then go over. Yeah. You said no to him, but everyone's dream really yeah. is. Every young no. footballer thinks that England yeah. is. You yeah. have to go over. So go on, yeah, be the force one that said no to going to England. Playing in the underage because obviously years ago underage league one wasn't a thing. It's kind of recent. Go into underage league four and work my way up to the first team, then go. Mm -hmm. Be the first one to do that. So then that's kind of like a setting stone where young flips say, Look at him. Yeah, we well, don't what need he done. Yeah. And then they do that. And then you get more players coming out of the country. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, better national team. It is less pressure on young once they know that yeah. there is a route where you can make it to England, but it doesn't have to be at 16. Exactly. Yeah. So now they can see the route. Obviously, when I was. A young play. I didn't see the real. No, you just told me. I made you a failure. I don't make it at a young Stuff age. was obviously like when I remember stuff was going on with me, like just saying personal life stuff mm -hmm. was happening. And then when I went to Pats, like it's kind of like hard to explain, but wasn't enjoying football. Yeah. Then so kind of once I didn't quit football. Right. But like stuff happened at the end of Belvo. Then when League of Ireland started coming in. Like just say I kind of like wasn't enjoying it. Kind of like took like two months off. Step back a little. Yeah, took two months off of football. Kind of was like I used to, I used to in French childish. Threw me toys out of the and was like Nah, I don't want to play anymore. Got on it anyway. Me that was probably mixed in with me. Like at that time, no one would have wanted. No one wanted to sign me in England. Yeah. So it was all mixed in like me not enjoying football. Not getting off for that in England. That must be hard to take after all Every, the clubs yeah. you did look at you like, when you were younger. Like, yeah, so then it was like everything mixed in, then it was like, no, like, I don't want to do it. Fuck this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck this shit, like, whatever. Then fucking, my dad, obviously, my dad was very good with me, like, he, he listened to me, like, dealt with me good, like, wasn't too strict, wasn't too whatever. Yeah. Like, was good with me. And uh, then when I got, came back into Pats, when I joined Pats then, Jiro O'Brien signed me. Mm. For Pats, and ever since then, I just loved it again. Felt a love for like, it. Obviously, I haven't loved it every single day. Like, you go through tough spells and that. Yeah. Mm. But I loved it. And I tell you one thing when I was 16, I think, I got a job in the airport. And it lasted two days. And got sacked. Really? Two days. And ever, <laughs> ever, ever since. Don't keep up with the big coffee <laughs> no, no. I was in. Terminal, terminal 1, Terminal 2, just say you're about to buy Jack, like, like yeah. you go get food or something. Yeah. Like, I was working as, like, you do clean up or you serve food. It was like a, what you call it, just say you go up and then there's loads of shit in front of you and you're looking out the night, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I just serve it. Put it I just put it on your plate, like, yeah. Good luck, yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny little skew, you're Good luck. Yeah, so I had to, so just say, Oh no, what I was about to get onto was I had to do the washing for one day. Like just say I was on wash up, like fucking I'm new here, like second day on the job, like this washing obviously not a washing machine. What's it called? The dishwasher? Dishwasher. This <laughs> washer. Yeah. Oh, it's it's 2021, dishwasher yeah. me, yeah. <laughs> What's it called? This thing is like how do I explain? It's about fucking that height, yeah, and reading. Then I'll hurt to the wall. Now we go hurt to the wall. Clean as big. Yeah, like so big, and it's just ongoing, like around. Just say, oh, get push in in. But then you could be on the floor, and you have to pick up all the dirty stuff yeah. on a big trolley. So then there's people bringing in trolleys, putting the dirty shit on, and then you have to put that in the dishwasher. Then all that. Oh, I mean, this shit was building up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, like nearly touching the roof. Not even messing the plates, I touching the roof. Oh, I mean, I turned it just like every I was all over the place, didn't know what I was doing. Didn't even get taught how to do it. Really? Like, 
I was like down at one side just turn around, smack off, like just say a loose play or something. About twelve of them fall on oh, the deck, no everything way. smashes. The man jack comes in and she's like, What are you doing? And I was just like just I was just a bit hot head, I was free. People trying to play to me and all. I was like, You didn't teach me what to do, so what else am I supposed to do about it? She was like, get off that and clean the floor. I was like, what do you mean clean the floor? Are you serious? And I was like, right. So I done that then. <laughs> <laughs> just like this thing, this was the longest eight hour shift I've ever had in my whole life. Felt like it was there three days. Now I know the airport. And then, so then I was on a, what was I on? I was on the floor with yeah. the trolleys. And there's this fella that was in Chanel, fully unflaz out of Chanel, because it's like a link, just say. Like, and uh, had this, we us still had trolleys full of shit, right? right? And there was no one eating food around, so I was like, his name's Lloyd. Funniest fuck I've ever been on. You should see this, the fella's <laughs> so dumb. He's so dumb, like, he's so gullible. So gullible, so, like, perfectly gullible. I was like, his one was full, mine was empty. Cause I just brought my name and I was like, Lloyd, look at this. Oh, I mean, sprinted around this hall with this and torn it. <laughs> the way I torn it, I was like, I got a grip now. I was doing a bleeding wheelie and all. Like, with <laughs> these around the place. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, do that, do that, right? I was like, it's gas, look at the wheel spins on this. Him being a gullible thing. His yokes be going full, right? He was like, and he's a big happy head, big dog. He was like, <laughs> 40 plates fall out of the side and smash everywhere. Here's me always on the floor laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was in stitches laughing, right? The man Jack comes out and she's like, You again, you're messing. And I was like, Ah, hardly. Like, <laughs> and then, right, so then she brought me in. And just like, they're all so stupid in there. Like, it was like, just like I told her, I can't work on Saturdays and Sundays. But you didn't force us that Saturday and Sunday. I was like, It's sound. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. So, you know, shouldn't have even got the job. Because you have to do a just say an airport security test. We would not let. My dad done it for me and passed it. No, we would not let him. Yeah, my dad done it for me and passed it, so I got in, right? But then yeah, one that I was dealing with on the emails, I was like, I booked in. I told him that I can't work Saturday and Sunday. I have a match, right? She was like, yeah. What <laughs> she was literally like, well, you have to do it. I was like, what do you mean? I was, like, I was like, I can swap rosters with Lloyd, right? I was like, I'll do his next Wednesday, and he can do my Sunday. She was like, no. So I didn't show up to work, right? And then she emailed me going, oh, can you come in for a meeting and bring your badge, <laughs> right? So I went in, my dad was like, oh, yeah, I got psyched. I was like, yeah, refreshed. I don't want to go back anyways. <laughs> I've been. Mean, you the sheriff from Lady the airport bringing your badge. Yeah, I won't. Right, so then I brought it in. Then she was like, oh, right, so yeah, I got psyched or whatever. I was like, fresh. <laughs> Look, I was like, fresh. So ever since that day, that was like a turning point. So I was like, I will never work a proper day in my life. You want to like, play football for this children? I was like, no. Oh, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do, 100%. I was like, I'll never work in eight, in eight to five. But I was doing 12 to nines and all. I was like, that is horrible. I was like, I couldn't do it. Like, obviously, some people, it works at them. Some people right. enjoy it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people enjoy it. I was like, no, that's enough for me. Yeah, but that, not a lot of people have the chance you have. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't do it. So that got me into that mindset. Need to work that, This is what I need to do, yeah. And that benefited me then when I was saying, when I went into pre season, did two pre-seasons then, but especially this one, where I was kind of touching, I only made two appearances last season, it's kind of in and around it, where I was like, no, this season I want to be in it, I want yeah, to be yeah, part yeah. of that team. So now it's benefited me, because I worked so hard, and now it's like, right, this is how far I've gotten. Like, I know I still need, still need to go, still yeah. need to work hard, like, but this is where I've gotten, I've made 14 appearances out of 18. So like, and the gaffer wasn't expecting me to play as much as yeah. I have. So it's kind of like, that's what will happen when you work hard. So I need to keep doing that. And you're rewarding, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I've been rewarded from working hard. So it just goes to show that if I keep working hard, that the sky's the limit, like, don't know where to go. Don't know what you want to speak about, but the reward you have coming up. Yeah, yeah obviously, yeah. I've signed a new deal now, two and a half years. So they, Pat's obviously like me, so my deal would have been it's up at the, end of this season, <laughs> at the end of this season. Lloyd loved you. Yeah. <laughs> would have been at the end of this season so they wanted to get it done early so obviously they offered me a contract whenever i was so now i'm getting assigned six months early brilliant so i'm signing a new two and a half year deal so it could be in the next yeah, year and a half yeah. two years at least so that's going to be my future as pat's over the next two years whatever happens in the two years happens like whatever yeah i don't know what can happen but my next two years is at pat's so i'm hoping that i play regularly Make a load, make probably 50 appearances, whatever, in the two years, 60 appearances. Then I can go and say, well, I have 60 14 appearances. 
whatever number mm -hmm. starts and then teams be in for you exactly. they're playing the fourth team then yeah, have the chance yeah. to go away they got love to play in England as we said but when I kind of got to turn off a bit from the English or like oh he said to me that I'd, that I'd love to play in the Netherlands and Belgium yeah mm. like, I'd love to play over there because the way I play as a footballer like it would suit me mm. like I'd just love to test it out and because I like traveling like I'd just love to I don't want to be the normal fella that just goes and plays in England like because over here England doesn't make it come back here yeah if you aren't going to play in England in the Premier League, sorry, and you're gonna play in the Championship or whatever, and you're just gonna bounce around. Obviously, if you have a chance to play in the Premier League, you're not gonna turn it down. Yeah. But if you're gonna play in the Champion, just bounce around from club to club. What do you think? Like, yeah, I would love to experience and like the way football's played in England over there, like not in the Premier League, is different. Like it's a long ball and do it. Yeah, yeah, as I was saying, every match, you're in the best position you could be in. Yeah. Everything to look forward to. Two that's, years now to put the head down with pants. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. You're just going to put the head down to see where it takes you. Look, I'm not going to look too far into the future. I just take every day as it is. Exactly. Just go on there and see what happens. Like, But the one thing that I would say, like, obviously, if I finish off that, you should watch the League of Ireland. That's the main thing. Because it's so underrated, you would enjoy it. And that, uh, if you haven't tried it, try it out on a Friday night, normally about 8 o'clock, quarter to 8. So you should definitely give it a watch because your opinion on it will definitely change. I know that for a fact because mine has. And so, and so I mean, like, from watching you there, just from obviously listening to you speak and having you on, I was gonna start. Yeah, I, I mentioned now about yourself once, but right? <laughs> <laughs> from obviously from what you're talking about, Lego Horror football and Lego Celery, really watching much, or you will most definitely invest in and ever be to watch the football. So Ben, we just want to say massive thank you for coming and you've hit the nail in the head we want to do. This is episode three. And we wanted to, to, the whole purpose of this episode is to recognise the football in Ireland, what players go through, what it takes, and what we have to look forward to. And we have a lot to look forward to in you, Ben, and your credit to the yeah. area. Thanks for having me on. Credit to Harlow, you know? Yeah. Credit to the area. So Harlow's that's... on, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Don't forget that. The one thing that I will say is that if anyone thinks that I'm fucking stuck up around Glenn said it. He knows me now, I'm a fucking sound cunt, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw it off, I don't know. No way. It is so cool. <laughs> I just want to finish on this, Ben, as well. The big thing for me is seeing you grow up. Ever seen you, well, I know Ben, I'll be like, yeah, you've done from the start. Yeah, we play, I played football with you on the green and stuff like this. One thing I want to ask, really, the Celtic came not going to get me. Right? <laughs> you're Celtic come knocking me. What's your name? He can't throw himself down. And <laughs> <laughs> you can't, I mean, he can't throw himself down. He's not a horny He's not a horny one. He's not a horny one. The Celtic come knocking me. Right? We'll send fucking them belly down to the gas station. <laughs> There we go, that's episode 3 of the GNT show, Ben. Thank you very much. <laughs> we wish you the best of luck now in the future. And we'll be seeing Ben very shortly again, hopefully, on the show. Thank you. Thanks very much. Adios.